Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. We're going to be speaking frequently from now on on the topic of resistance. It's actually amazing the force the word itself has taken on in the arenas of politics, medicine, military, even electricity. And regardless of the field in which it is used, there is one common thread among all those uses, the prevention of something new happening. And in most cases and uses, the something new is also bad. The word comes from the late Latin resistere and means to hold back. The notion of resisting generally carries with it a defensive connotation, but that isn't necessarily true. If we go to sacred scripture, we see numerous examples of aggressive, offensive resistance. Look at the family Maccabees, for example, a splendid example of resistance if there ever was one. This clan would not surrender, would not give one inch, and would push back against the invading Greeks who sought to destroy the people of the covenant. Not so much by violence, although that was the final resort, but by assimilation. The Maccabees were fighting a two-front war against the conquering outside world and the traitors within. Sound familiar? They refused to succumb to the conquering culture and attacked the traitors from within. They went on the offensive against the traitors because they co correctly identified them as the biggest threat to the people of God. For example, Mattathias of Modin, a well-respected leader in the city, not only refused the overtures of the king to acquiesce to the invading conquerors and their godless pagan ways, he also spoke on behalf of his sons. That was his response to the culture, the first version of his resistance. But his resistance turned even more severe at the traitors in their ranks. Immediately after refusing the bribes by the king's officers to betray the covenant, another Jew came forward and accepted the offer to turn his back on God and betray the covenant. We are told that at that moment, Mattathias was filled with zeal, his fury was aroused, and he sprang on the traitor in the sight of God and witnesses and killed him on the pagan altar. Not only that, but he killed the king's messenger, who was creating the situation in the first place. And moreover, still moved by zeal for the living God, he destroyed the altar as well. There's a classic example torn right from the pages of sacred scripture of what resistance can look like. Notice what we're told by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. His resistance was born from a zeal, and his fury-fueled justice was aroused. Church of Nice adherents find these kinds of passages, passages disturbing, so they like to relegate them to the order of, well, it's kind of exaggerated or not applicable in current circumstances. Not so fast not to promote or advance the idea of killing, but rather to focus on the idea of a zeal motivated, motivated by a longing for justice based on the love of God. That is never out of date. And when the object of that holy zeal is the traitors within the church, that is never a bad thing. In fact, it is necessary, it is required. We are all too familiar with the culture of the diabolical. We witness it everywhere we look in the culture. But what too few Catholics are willing to stand up and see, face and admit, and then resist with a holy zeal, is the culture of the diabolical which has infiltrated our own ranks, especially among the clergy, without whose allegiance and assistance no overthrow of the church could stand a chance. There are simply too many good priests, even good bishops, who are being ground under the wheels and the gears of the diabolical and demonic forces which have set up camp in various quarters of the church today through the cooperation of other clergy. It will be useless to fight the evil in the culture without first resisting the evil in the ranks of the clergy, which is all too commonplace. Satan knows that a weak church means a world easily overrun. The Old Testament truth is still true. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. It's no longer possible, permissible, for faithful Catholics to not warn their fellow Catholics of the dangers in the day-to-day -day life of the church. The evils of permitting homosexuals into seminary, ordaining them and letting them loose on unsuspecting parishioners. 
letting leftward politically motivated ideologues control parish councils and parish education offices, to let go unchallenged, poorly catechized teachers and principals running Catholic schools, to dismiss the evil poured into the minds of young Catholics on college campuses like Notre Dame and practically every Jesuit-run university in the world, the continued marginalization of good priests and religious by wicked or politically-minded bishops. The list never seems to reach an end, but it is no longer acceptable to let your loved ones remain in the dark about all this. You must speak. In order to speak, you must know. In order to know, you must study and learn. To devote the appropriate amount of time to study, we, may, we must amend our lives and make this holy resistance campaign the center of our lives, of your lives. Mattathias of the Maccabees clan did not arrive at a state of holiness which brought forth his zeal by simply dipping in and out of the reality of his day. He lived it daily, devoted himself to it out of love for God and justice every day. This must be the nature of our resistance today in these current circumstances. Do not ever let anyone tell you, you are too extreme or you need to dial it back a bit. Remind them of Mattathias and tell them instead to step it up a bit. Them, in fact, step it up a lot. Ask them if they believe in hell and if they believe souls go there. Ask them if they have been baronized meaning accepted the comfortable, easygoing preachings of men like Bishop Robert Barron, who say we have a reasonable hope that all men are saved, parroting, of course, the nutty preachings of Protestant-inspired Swiss Jesuit theologian Hans Urs von Balthasar. If they answer, like they probably will, that either there isn't a hell or no one really goes there or only child-molesting, psychopathic, maniacal dictators, but everyone else is pretty much in. If they answer like that, refer them to the book of Daniel. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. This supremely idiotic notion that all or most men are saved is the first thing that must be resisted and resisted mightily. The widespread, unofficial, yet very real, quiet acceptance of this demonic-inspired rot is arguably the single most dangerous axiom bandied about in the church these days. When resistance is shown, remember that moment of confrontation. Then you can consider it a done deal that you will meet the enemy face to face. Resist him with everything you've got. Resist him with everything. You are fighting with a holy zeal inspired by love of God, with a desire for justice. Never lay that down ever resist and advance. God love you. I'm Michael Boris.